Hello, this is the Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Kubis CB1006, which looks a lot, quite a bit like a G-Shock. Let's start out with the wrist check. I'm wearing a Liege LG8956, homage to a Rolex Daytona. And Greg was wearing my Ben Davis 3018G, homage to an AP Royal Oak. I asked Grogo if he was glad to be back at the Jedi Academy after life day break. He said the lunch lady had quit, so Master Skywalker asked Chewbacca to fill in, but he couldn't do it because they couldn't find a hairnet big enough. So they called Boba Fett and asked him if he had a net. He said no, a net was not available, but he could probably arrange an appearance from Frankie Avalon. Here's the watch. It came in this metal container. The metal container was optional $2 upgrade. So if you don't need a metal container, you can save $2. It also came with these instructions here. And these instructions did not match the movement of the watch. Uh, when I went to go set the alarm or figure out how to turn the alarm on and off, the instructions didn't help. I had to figure it out on my own. This is a $4 watch, actually six since I included the metal box. But that is kind of deceptive because the store I bought it from is playing the shipping game. Usually shipping is free on AliExpress, but in this case the shipping was $3.69, which bumps up the price quite a bit. But still I paid less than $10 after taxes for this watch. So this watch was even cheaper than the Skmi I recently reviewed. But that watch was a 100 meter watch with a 10 year battery and just feels a bit more rugged. This watch is only 30 meters, has a normal battery, and feels a bit plasticky. So why buy this watch when you can get a Casio for just a little bit more? There really is no reason. I imagine a lot of you see these really cheap watches on AliExpress and ask yourself if it is any good. But you don't spend the money to find out because it's just a mild curiosity and not worth the $10 and 3-4 to four weeks wait to find out. Well, I spent the $10 for you. Then there's the name, Kubos. I guess it is better than Skimi, but not by much. If somebody asks you if you're wearing a G-Shock, you can say, most certainly not. This is a genuine Kubos. I'm not going to bother giving the dimensions. It's the size of a G-Shock. Here, let me show you my G-Shock. See, very similarly sized. And it wears like a G-Shock, and is a, but is a bit lighter than a G-Shock. It only weighs 49 grams. My G-Shock weighs 75 grams. The case material is a hard plastic that just doesn't seem as pliable as the resin of my G-Shock. Now let's just take a look at the dial. You can see the DT right there, which usually stands for dual time. Well, that is not the case. This is not a dual time watch. You can only track one time zone. The DT is written on the crystal, so maybe they use this crystal in other watches that do have dual time. I do not know. The days of the week are also written on the crystal and not part of the LCD display. But the day of the week is, is uh, there's an LCD box that keeps shifting that indicates which day of the week it is. I have no clue what the markers in this little round circle are for. It changes at the second second of a 10 second interval and at the fifth second. The, I don't know why. Up top, there's a PM indicator. You can't see it because it's PM right now. If it was it, it was the AM, then you would see the letters PM, but the black box indicates that it is PM. Maybe they should have put the PM to the side of the LCD display. Then the next thing tells you if the alarm is on or off. Right now the alarm is on. I will show you how to set it later. Then these, uh, all these blue dots here are written on the crystal. So I don't know what they're for. And also these black bars up here. They seem to flash with the pattern of this uh, circle here. This first one flashes on the second second. And this other one flashes on the fifth second. These little arrows on the bezel are just props. And this button here and this button here is just a prop. 
But the four pushers are actual real pushers and they actually do work. Let's see, pushers. You press the mode button once and it puts you in stopwatch mode. Hit the start button. Hit it again to stop, reset. It also does split time. Go ahead and start it, then hit the reset button. And then when you hit the reset button again, it takes you back to where the time was. If you've used the stopwatch and hit mode, it takes you back to normal time. But if you're at the stopwatch and you haven't used it when you hit mode again, it takes you to the alarm setting. And then you can set the alarm. Uh, you do not set whether or not the alarm is on or off in the screen. You just set the time for the alarm. And as you can see, there's an A to indicate AM, PM. And uh, if you want to set the change the alarm right now, it's set for 9 a.m. Just hit the start button and that sets it to 10 a.m. And if you want to set it to 1030, hit the reset button and that takes you to the minutes. And then you can just set the minutes to 1030. And that's all you can do with the uh, alarm time and just hit mode again. And then if you want to see what the alarm is set to, just hit the, when you're in normal time, just hit the reset button and it tells you uh, if the alarm is set, what the alarm is set to. And this black bar here tells you if the alarm is set or not. Then if you don't want it set, just hit this and then you're basically turning off the alarm. The alarm isn't very loud. Uh, don't. It will not wake you up in the morning, so don't use it as an alarm clock. The next mode after the alarm is the well, setting the time and the date. You cannot set the year, so you have to set the day manually. So anyway, uh, once you're at the day time, go ahead and just keep hitting reset till you get to you, you want to change. And as you can see, there's a P there to indicate PM. And then you're at the date mode. You can set the month and the day here. And once again, since you can't set the year, you have to set the day of the week. And since you can't set a year, that means this will not automatically handle leap year. So you will have to set it manually on the February 29th. There is also no daylight savings flag. So when daylight savings comes, you're going to have to set it manually too. You can't just toggle a flag. Of course, that's not too difficult because you're only changing the hour then once you're done setting it just hit mode again and then you're back to normal time and once again this is not a dual time so there's not a second time to set the strap isn't too bad you can tell it's not as well built as a g-shock strap but the aliexpress ad says it's made of silicone and i don't agree i don't think it is it feels like resin to me it doesn't have that a slick sticky feeling of silicone so it's comfortable and I like it the buckle is sturdy enough just barely sturdy enough it's not so light that it feels cheap cheap but it doesn't give you a huge sense of confidence but you don't feel like it's going to break on you also the strap is riveted on and there are no screws to unscrew. So basically, if this strap breaks on you, you might as well just throw this watch away and buy another one because this was a $4 watch anyway. The backlight's pretty good. You hit it there. As you can see, it's got a pretty good glow to it. And it, it covers the whole crystal pretty good. So I'm pleased with the backlight. And here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. It wears nice. I mean, it wears like a G-Shock. It's shaped like a G-Shock, has a strap similar to a G-Shock. So it's, but once again, it's not quite as heavy as a G-Shock. Not that a G-Shock is heavy. This thing is just really, really light. What do I like about this watch? Well, it's very lightweight and comfortable. And I really like the backlight. Does a really good job of lighting up the dial. 
And it's a true four pusher watch. I had that Skimi and two of the pushers were the light. So it was really a two pusher watch. What are my gripes and groans? A lot of stuff written on the crystal does not apply to the display like DT and this chime thing. I don't like the fake arrows on the bezel. I just don't like it when they put fake stuff on the watch. And the case feels a bit brittle and plasticky. I don't think this one can take a hit at all. Do I recommend this watch? No. The watch is not garbage and not bad considering the price. But we wear our big chunky G-Shocks because we understand that our watches are practically indestructible. And the huge size is what helps make that possible. This is just a big, huge watch just because. I bought this watch because I was curious, and now that my curiosity has been met, it is on the Facebook Marketplace. And I'm going to be have a hard time selling this just because of the shipping cost. Well, thank you for watching my review, and I will be back with another review or unboxing. Bye.